There are a lot of programming languages out there, and these are some of the more popular ones of recent years. And you can look at lists on the internet in terms of what are the most popular language, what are the languages most in demand. You'll see a bunch of these, uh, C++, C Sharp, Java, Swift, Kotlin, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, SQL or SQL, PHP, are all pretty high in demand. But a lot of lists recently have had Python at the very top or very near the top. So the question is, how is Python used? Because each of these languages have a specific use usually, or a niche that they fulfill, or a platform they work for. For example, Swift is used for creating iOS uh, applications on the iPhone and iPad. Kotlin is used for creating Android mobile apps. Visual Basic is used a lot in, in smaller businesses. HTML and CSS, which is a scripting language, rather than a programming language, is used for web development, as is JavaScript. Dart is used for cross-platform. And, and so these all have different uses. So what are the uses for Python? How is Python primarily used? Well, one of the popular uses of Python is in web development. We have what's often referred to as full-stack development, which consists of developing the front end in the browser, and that's usually done with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But then there's a back end of data which sits on a server somewhere. In a lot of web pages we look at, or even web applications, the presentation of that information is what we call dynamic web pages. So we might make a request for a certain amount of data. A web server generates that information and sends the result back to the browser as an HTML, CSS, JavaScript web page. Now that data might reside in things like MySQL or MySQL, Oracle, SQLite. But then there's a, a programming front end to those databases that does the querying and handles the request and sending the results. And Python is one of those programs that is often used now on the server side or the back end to collect that information and send it to the browser. Instagram, for example, uses Python to show the list of images that belong to a particular user, as well as all of the likes, the comments, uh, data information, and it handles that as you browse through various uh, accounts. Each time you go to a different account, it's going to send a request to send that information and uh, as a result. Now, Python doesn't do that necessarily in and of itself, but rather Python is very extensible. And so it uses some frameworks. Frameworks are sort of like templates that contain may contain some libraries of different uh, routines and handling certain things for us, such as maybe uh, logging in. And so there's two popular frameworks that work with Python in terms of doing the backend approach. And that is Django and Flask. Another popular use of Python is in data science, and this has really driven the popularity of Python and the uses of Python and the demand for people with these skills. We live in, a, in, a, in an era right now where everything is very data driven. And so Python is used a lot for data analysis and data mining. We can do things like take data and create charts and visualization of data. So here's an example of data that is looking at or being visualized as the watch frequency of tornadoes over a number period of, of years, even possibly, possibly decades. It allows us to do things like statistical thinking and hypothesis testing by mining that data for us and presenting results to us that normally we wouldn't see without the computer being able to do that. Now here, rather than frameworks, we have some libraries that allow us to do the visualization aspect. And some, some popular ones are matplotlib. There's also a geoplotlib for doing mapping, geographic mapping. Altair also does geographic mapping. And then there's Plotly and Seaborn to do things like pie charts and bar charts and things like that of results of mining and analyzing data. Another area in data science is machine learning what we might refer to as artificial intelligence, or AI. And here's where the computer, using some algorithms, learns by looking at data. It kind of feeds itself on data and comes to conclusions mm -hmm. that might change how it reacts to data down the road. 
An example here would be Google Maps, where it's showing um, how many minutes it might take to get from, from one place to a destination. And it can look at traffic data to come up with an estimate of that. We've often used websites where, um, particularly commercial sites, where they make recommendations on products based on things we've looked at or things we've purchased in the past. In the case of Amazon, I mean, there's a new book coming out that they think based on the books you bought previously, you'd be really interested in buying this. So it's kind of targeted marketing uh, and they use or can use Python to accomplish that. And that's another example of machine learning. Facial recognition, where computers can compare a photo of somebody to a database of facial images and be able to make a connection. And then our email systems a lot of times look at messages we are receiving and put them into a spam folder. And what goes into that spam folder can be changed over time as the system learns through machine learning what is spam and what is not. A subset of machine learning is deep learning. And there's a difference between the two in that machine learning is based on structured data. Deep learning, however, uses various layers of neural networks that simulate how the human brain thinks, various layers of algorithms. One that's been in the news a lot lately is driverless cars, and driverless cars are made possible through deep learning. A simpler use of the same concept is robotic vacuums. And some of the newer vacuums on the market use deep learning to examine where your furniture is and where other objects are and to map out the floor that it needs to vacuum. Doctors can use deep learning for triaging patients or diagnosing patients. And then applications like Siri on the iPhone and Alexa on the Android use deep learning in terms of making suggestions and answering questions. Another growing area is cybersecurity. In here, we might use Python to uh, analyze passwords, the strength of passwords. We might use it to detect malware on a system, as well as some encryption and decryption of data. A fourth area that Python is used is in embedded applications. IoT stands for Internet of Things, and it's the idea that objects can have embedded chips in them that communicate with other objects. You may have a car that shows the tire pressure of your tires. And that's one object communicating with other objects. LED boards are often driven by embedded applications with embedded chips. Uh, Christmas light displays, things like that can be, can be animated using embedded applications. Animatronics is another area. And you may have seen the ad for Samsung that has a refrigerator that has a display on it and actually can communicate to your cell phone of needs for your grocery list. Smart homes is another embedded application use of Python where you can control your thermostat or your lights via your smartphone. Then there are a few other areas. Uh, we can create desktop GUI applications, and we'll do that at the end of this course. We'll use a library called TK Inter uh, to create a graphical user interface for a desktop app. We'll start out just creating desktop apps that are, that are um, console-based or text-based. You can do gaming using a library called Pygame. Um, most gaming, though, is probably done with Unity and C Sharp as far as smaller industry games and individual games, indie games. And then the hobbyist, and a big one here is using the Raspberry Pi, very tiny, cheap computer to do things like control security cameras or control LED boards. Sometimes those LED boards are also controlled by a subset of Python called MicroPython. So there's lots of uses for Python, and some of these are really major these days, uh, the, particularly the data science and the cybersecurity and the IoT, and those have really driven the need for people with Python skills, and they pay extremely well. In the next video, we'll look at why should you learn Python?
And what are the advantages of Python over other languages?